Let me move to uh, advanced strength of materials. We'll be looking at flywheels, the design of them. So in a flywheel, what you have is a disc that is, um, is fit into a shaft. Typically the shaft will be slightly larger than the disc, so it's tight fit. And there are no gaps because if there's any gaps, then you can have vibrational issues that could occur. And so not only now you have a shrink fit situation like I had discussed previously, I already discussed this topic once. Now you have the disc also rotating. And so for that reason, now you get extra stresses that need to be accounted for. And how you deal with that? You use the principle of superposition. We discussed how to get the stresses to the shrink fit, shrinkage allowance fit situation. You superimpose those stresses to the stresses due to the rotation of the disc or the spinning of the disc. So uh, flywheels are made by shrink fitting it. Uh, and it can be, we can determine what the stresses are by looking at the solution for rotating this. I already discussed what the solution is for a rotating disc, which is the equation you see there. And then I show you there an extra term, and that term is this one here, these three terms here. That's the stresses that are coming from the shrinkage allowance fit calculations. So again, before we're looking at a rotating disc alone, we're looking at a rotating hollow uh, disc alone. But now we're looking at the both of these together, um, shrink fit, shrinkage fit. Plus now we're looking at the whole thing uh, spinning. And so as a consequence, now you have to add those stresses into the system. So using the principle of superposition, assuming, and this has a fundamental assumption here, is that all the stresses are linear. And you can see here, I'm giving you the same equations I had discussed before, the shrink fit equations, uh, which are this here, the stresses, the radial stress, the hoop stress, and the deflections. And then I'm gonna plug that in here uh, and superimpose. So basically what I'm doing there is uh, superposition or superposition. of shrinkage fit equations, which was covered in the previous lecture, two lectures ago, plus spinning equations. And you can add those stresses linearly as long as the stresses are linear on their own uh, and the stresses do not exceed the yield of the material, um, then you can do this addition. So very straightforward. Let me remind you a little bit about what we did there. Okay, so let, let's kind of re revise or remember. So the radial stress, hoop stress, and radial deflection are going to be dependent upon the fact that the shrinkage allowance induces more uh, stresses, right? But also depends on the stresses and the flexions due to the spinning in itself. And so noise of Poisson ratio is an inner radius of that disc. B is the outer radius. R is a coordinate R that we're discussing the whole time, uh, which is in the radial direction. And then rho is the density of the material and omega is the spinning speed. What is the spin of that? What is the speed of a spin? And then uh, uh, we, we can then add to that the shrink fit equations where basically it's really either the internal pressure or the external pressure depending upon which one you're looking at. If you're looking at the disc, um, the disc will be the internal pressure that we're worried about. If you're looking at the shaft, it will be the external pressure because the pressure we're worried about is the pressure at that interface. The interface between the shaft and the disc because of the interference of the, of the shaft being larger than the disc. And if you wonder how you fit a shaft into a disc, a shaft that's bigger than a disc, that'd be a good, good riddle problem, right? 
Uh, but all you do is you either apply cold conditions to the shaft, and then you are able to then insert the di this disc in it, or sorry, insert the shaft into the disc, or you can warm up the disc so it expands, and then you can fit the disc onto the shaft. So that's the process that's used, but you're basically combining the spinning stress calculations to the shrinkage uh, fit equations. You add these two, and now you get a total stress, not only from the interference of these two materials coming together, but then also from the spinning. Any questions on that before I move it to examples? Okay, no questions, let's move to examples.